Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about the Tenth Commandment. But first, I would like to apologize for not getting our video done last Wednesday. I did not have time to properly do this video, so I had to wait until I did have time to do it. So we're coming at you today with it. And the Tenth Commandment is located in Exodus 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. First thing you got to do is what does covet mean? Covet means for you to yearn to possess something that's not yours. To desire to have something and especially when it goes into when you're willing to sin to get this item that you have in your mind that you must have. It is something, it is a governance of your thought. That's what makes commandment number 10 groundbreaking. Because most of the thoughts of that day, I mean most of the laws of that day, were just strictly for your actions. This commandment for the time was probably the first in the legal codes to govern your thought. God gave us this to help us realize that the commandments are there to help us change our hearts, our inner selves, as well as our outer selves. You know, it's not just for your physical actions he wants us to govern our thoughts so that we live better for him and have a life more abundant and that's what makes this a special video and i wanted to spend a little bit more time on the tenth commandment because well you'll see as we go into it but this commandment really is at the heart of most of what mankind gets themselves into and there's scripture to back it up, you know. Uh, let me go over here real quick. And what is it? For the love of money is the root of all evil, which will come, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's in Timothy. Um, so this commandment, thou shalt not covet, shouldn't be taken lightly you should really want to get in there and see what is being said completely you know it's worth the study you know i've really enjoyed studying on this since i've been with y'all and uh in colossians 3 5 paul tells us that covetousness is idolatry in other words the want and desire for things can be as another god to us we can put all of our energy into something and and end up hurting ourselves deeply just like we would by worshiping another god and our god is a jealous god ladies and gentlemen he will hold us accountable if we fall to worshiping foreign gods I and mean, he, he is the only god he is the most powerful the most high and we must respect him each and every day each and every way now other points i'd like to make is it's okay to want things but you run into trouble when you obsess about them and you can't stop thinking about them and you you just have to have them and you'll sin to get them you know, that's that's when you run into trouble. And Jesus tells us where your treasure is, is where your heart is, you know. And I'll go back and get that verse for you later. You, you need to find a way to be satisfied. You can be satisfied in your heart because there's always going to be something newer, something shinier, something that you want out there. And a happy man is a satisfied man. Somebody that can be content with what they have on hand. 
is not an easy thing because this life requires a lot out of men. The way we live today, especially because there's so many gadgets, there's all this internet and things on the internet, and the, oh, it's just ridiculous the choices and everything that we have. And you know, like I said, Paul calls it idolatry. Uh, the unsatisfied are never rich, but the satisfied are always rich. You can be ambitious and want things, but to obsess about them is a sin. And uh, there's another point I wanted to make. While I was while I was researching this, there was a preacher that I was listening to, and uh, he was explaining. The word believe in in a verse that he was talking about. I can't remember for sure because I have these and I listen to these while I'm going down the road. And I don't, I wasn't able to write it down or make a note. So I have to do it from memory. But he was explaining that the word believe in this particular passage in Hebrew, the way it was used, meant to commit, to be committed. And when we think about believing in Jesus, we need to bring that to a commitment. You know, we need to put our lives committed to the Lord. That means we need to go to church. We need to watch our, our mouths. We need to follow the Ten Commandments. We need to get out there and express the Great Commission, spread the word for the Lord. Save some souls from hell because hell is real and we don't want anyone to end up going there. And that is the mission. You know, Jesus says faith without works is dead. And I'm going to read y'all some more verses on this topic. All right. So we're going to start. All these are going to be from the King James Version. I've got them. Uh, on dailyverse.net he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver nor he that loveth abundance with increase this is also vanity that's in Ecclesiastes but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lust which drown men in destruction and perdition that's in Timothy and uh, it says in Luke, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And uh, Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, will, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In Mark 8, 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Y'all, that's, that's a lot right there. I have never understood how people can sell their souls for such a short period of time. I mean, a hundred years is about the max you're going to get. And that's nothing compared to eternity. This life is fleeting. It's like not even a drop of sand and a 55-gallon drum. It's, it's nothing compared to eternity. You have a chance to live here meekly and do the best you can. And God may even bless you highly and you can still have a great life but to sell your soul and you know, honestly it's not yours to sell if you've sold your soul come talk to me because i don't believe it's yours to sell and i don't believe that contract is worth the paper it's written on but we're gonna move on from that and that's just you know that's the level of greed that some people have in life and that's their battle that they have to fight because they want all these things and they're never going to be satisfied this side of heaven. Moving on. Matthew six nineteen through 20. Lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust corrupt, but where thieves break through and steal. But lay up 
for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. That's that's good stuff. That's what we're supposed to do. All right, now Proverbs thirteen eleven, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Look, ain't nothing wrong with a little hard work. And sometimes we have to be reminded of that. We can get on the comfortable side of life. And uh, just like this year, the Lord has shook my world up. And I'm, I'm doing a little bit more labor nowadays. And Proverbs 21, 26. He coveteth greedily all day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. Be a giving, loving trucker. That's what you got to do. Ecclesiastes 5.15 as he came forth of his mother's womb naked, shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. There you go. You got here naked, you're going to be leaving here naked. You ain't going to be able to take nothing in this world with you. The only thing that you can do in this world are the people that you come across. How you make them feel. If you taught them about Jesus. If they got saved and they're going to go to heaven. Those are the things that truly matter in this life. Proverbs 23, 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Hey, I ain't wise. <laughs> I've, been, I've been wrong just about everything i touched here lately. <laughs> we learn, we live. It's the way it goes. Psalms 119, 36. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Covetousness. <laughs> I can't really say it that good. Anyway, uh, Matthew six twenty four. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You got to make a choice. You know, you ain't got to be poor, but you got to give God your all, and everything else will fall in line. There are some very powerful rich people that have found christ and live for him i'm not gonna name names because i have named names before and some people are awful touchy about who you talk about and ephesians 5 3 but fornication and all uncleanliness or covenantness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints romans 13 6 for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. And one last one is going to be Exodus twenty seventeen. Thou shalt not covet that. Oh, that's that's repeating. Uh, that's well. Here's one in Corinthians. If I can read it in there. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Look, ladies and gentlemen, he gave us these Ten Commandments. For us to grow and be more holy. For us to be able to live a life more abundantly. For us to, to grow closer to Him. And if we can't do that, it says right there, we will not inherit the kingdom of God if we can't continue on in this life and be more holy. We've got to put in some work. We can't just... Wake up one day and, oh, I'm going to heaven. Unless you're the thief on the cross or unless you're fixing to die, if you're still alive after you accept Jesus, you got to do the work, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just sit there and mosey around. I've heard some people say that they believe there's an economic system in heaven to where some will have more, some will have less. I don't know how it works. I'll be happy with a tent just right inside the gate. Uh, as long as I'm there in God's presence, I don't deserve it, but I sure ain't going to turn it down, if y'all know what I mean. So many people 
don't understand the horrors that is hell. The horror it is to be without God's presence. When you wake up every morning, you're breathing the breath of the Lord. The Lord gives you that breath. And you need to be thankful for it. And appreciate each and every blessing that He's given you. Be satisfied with the blessings that He's given you. Work hard. Do His will. And try to be the best that you can be. That's all any of us can do. Follow the Ten Commandments. Follow His law. You know in your heart what God wants you to do. Somebody don't have to stand over you and tell you each and everything. Follow the Holy Spirit's lead in your life. God bless, and we will catch y'all on the next ride.